Hey everyone, welcome to Win the New Year, top tips to get your school ready and set for 2022. We're thrilled to have on today's call, Steve Giroux. Steve is the founder and owner of Giroux Brother Martial Arts and author of In the Black, Living the American Dream by Owning and Operating Your Own Small Business. Before handing the floor over to Steve, just a few admin items that I'd like to cover. One, if you should have a question, please drop them in the chat and we'll do our best at the end of the webinar to answer all of your questions. Two, if you're comfortable doing so, please turn on your video. We love to see your faces and it helps make the webinar a more interactive, engaging experience for all. And three, the bonus material that we promise to you all for attending live, it's a 12 point checklist to build and grow birthday party programs and private lesson voucher programs. We will be sending that out tomorrow along with the recording of this webinar. So let's get at it. Steve, the floor is all yours. All right, thanks, Kristen. Um, thanks for having me and welcome everyone. And I uh, hope that uh, this uh, webinar will help you out with your school. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about my uh, business. Um, I founded my uh, first studio in 1999. So we're going on our 23rd year uh, in business this January. And then um, had, you know, obviously many experiences growing with that school. And then uh, just recently in 2019, I started my second school closer to my house. So my first school, uh, obviously in 23 years, a lot changes family and you know all that stuff and kids and so we moved uh closer to our families which put me an hour and a half from my studio uh so my new studio is five minutes from my house so i have one that is um far and then i have one that's real close uh but the interesting dynamic of the schools is that one is an established 23 year old business and the other is a uh what two and a half year old business with one of those being uh during a pandemic so it's been definitely interesting. Um, like I was telling uh, Kristen and Kristen before uh, we got on the webinar, um, it's night and day to have a 23 year old studio running for you with instructors and black belts and uh, all different levels, uh, color belts and black belt club members. And then a new studio with, you know, brand new white belts and just kind of, you know, smaller attendance and not the same energy and um, excitement we have at the other one. So, but obviously been through it all. And that's the goal is to get the new one to that level as well. Um, and, you know, so I think this comes at a good time because I'm going to share with everybody exactly what I'm going through right now um, and the things that I'm going to be doing to uh, hit my goals for 2022. Um, so, you know, going into that, um, my first studio has approximately 150 students and my new studio has about 50 students. So my goal for 2022 is I would like to bring um, the main school up to 200 and the new school up to 100, giving me a total of 300 student, students. So um, never in my uh, whole history have I had that many students. I think the most I've had was uh, closing in on 200. I think we we're about 178 was our top one. Um, so basically um, what I'm trying to do is put things in place to, uh, to scale it and um, yeah, so it's, 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 it's basically just trying to hit those marks and, and having everything in, in place. So, um, so I'm sorry, I'm just reading my notes here. Um, so I guess, yeah, just starting out. So this is going to seem really simple, but for those of you who know me and how I run my school and everything, simple is good. And that's what I think, um, works for me. And that's what I'm trying to, have and that's what I try to teach my um, instructors is that we're trying to make things as easy as possible as streamlined as possible you know teaching good quality martial arts taking care of our students obviously that's number one priority but on the back end and the business side of it we want to have all the operation stuff kind of streamlined and easy and automated and just whatever we can to to make our lives easier to, to grow but still focus on you know teaching good quality uh, martial arts so the first thing is get organized um, again seems simple but years ago, because uh, I've done, you know, all these types of educational things to help myself and listen to other school owners who've been there before me and were successful. And, um, you know, one uh, in particular, I remember, you know, he said, you have to know your numbers, you know, you should always know how many students you have. 
And it does seem simple, but I've gone through periods of the year where we kind of lose track a little bit and then, you know, we'll get back to it and, you know, re refocus. And, and that's where I'm at right now is I'm in a 100% refocus stage. Um, the thing that took me off focus was the pandemic. Um, obviously that probably took every one of us off of that, but the thing with the pandemic is it made us shift the way we did everything. So it's a night and day operation from where we are now, now that people are back in the studio training and class sizes are back to, you know, normal. So we, we just did a lot of private lesson stuff and, you know, it worked. I'm very grateful because we pretty much kept the same numbers uh, as the pre COVID year financially. So all things considered, no one, a lot of people went out of business. Uh, I'm very, very grateful and fortunate, but now that that's over, knock on wood, um, we're moving back to the way that we would normally do things with bigger classes and, um, you know, multiple instructors and all that stuff. Um, so again, going back to getting organized and knowing your numbers, I do two different things. So I have an Excel spreadsheet that I keep all my students in. When I sign a new student up, I have a um, process that I go through where I enter them into the member manager software, and then I enter them into Excel. I put them into my email automation. So there's a process that I do. Um, but I think it's really important if you're not doing something like that, that you do. Uh, it's tedious a little bit. You know, I don't look forward to reconciling my accounts every month, but it's something that needs to be done. And it's a good checks and balance because if somebody's card declines or um, for whatever reason, you know, they got missed somehow, maybe, you know, you get a bunch of new students and you, you uh, thought you entered somebody and you didn't. I mean, it's a good check and balance to make sure that everybody's in there. Um, the other thing I just started doing is I started really utilizing the software that I've had uh, available to me. But when we're going back to pre-COVID, I was at my studio every day. I knew all the students. I knew who was there. I had a great grip on, you know, if somebody was absent for a while without really tracking attendance the way that I should. Um, now that I'm more absentee, it's a very important thing for me to be able to have eyes on what's going on. So, for instance, I'm not at my new my main school. On Mondays and Wednesdays anymore. So for one, I don't know um, if everybody's going to class, right? Without having an attendance tracker, we got to make sure that they're they're there. And then, you know, the, the billing side of it, which is what I've always really focused on, has always been 100% accurate. So I know that the students that I have in my list are, are paying, but what I was missing was, you know, there might've been some students that haven't gone for two or three weeks for whatever reason, and those are the students that eventually are going to quit. So, you know, I think it's it's really important to keep an eye on that stuff. Um, I don't necessarily think that you have to call them every time they miss a class. I think that's a little bit burdensome and annoying to the student, even and to the parent. But I think keeping track to say, okay, this guy hasn't been in class for three weeks, that's a red flag. And then we got to follow up. Um, the only real checks and balance I had before was our belt testing. So if, you know, every two months we do our belt testing. So if, you know, a student student or a handful of students didn't do their belt test, you know, those were the ones that, you know, I'd follow up with and stuff, but obviously not a great system. So I've spent a lot of time really utilizing the software, scheduling my students into their classes appropriately, setting the class schedule up for both schools. Um, and it is a project. It, it was a, a big project. Um, I'm 95% done with it and I'm relieved because it's all pretty much in place and now going forward and this is what I told my main instructor down at the big school is that now we're ready to grow you know and, and sometimes you have to step back and, and, and reorganize and get structured and now things are in place that we can grow. Um, I still take the calls that come in and I'll schedule introductory lessons um, but it's helpful now to know okay so like on Mondays I have five spots available for this age group. Wednesdays, I have this spot of it. So it's, it's just more for that reason too, that I'm able to um, manage growing without being there. So again, it just kind of comes down to being organized um, and, and having that system in place. And, you know, the software I like, so, I mean, I'm old school, so I do still like some pen and paper. I like Excel, um, but we are at a, a point where the, the stuff's available to us. So you might as well use it. And um, again, it's something that we're uh, planning on doing starting fresh in January. Um, but I'm training my instructors that they're going to be checking in most of the students because, you know, majority of our students are kids. They're not going to carry a key tag or anything like that. So it's just part of, you know, getting systems in place. But it's I, I think it's really important. I'm excited for it. Um, you know, it's that's that's number one. 
Um, number two, which kind of goes with number one is again, just having that system in place. The software, like I said, was good. Um, and then number three, I think this is, is also equally as important as you have to train your staff and your team and really focus on them. And this was something that I really uh, dove into during the pandemic. I, I've always um, been close with my instructors. They've all actually come through my program as kids and now they're in their, you know, low twenties. And so I've known them forever, great relationship, but I never really focused on training them as far as like replacing me. You know what I mean? That's kind of what I'm trying to do is not that I don't want to be part of my school or schools. I do very much want to be part of my schools, but I feel like to, to scale it, I can't be that guy who teaches every class and does every little thing at the school that others can be trained to do just as well. Um, so I think initially, um, where I'm at right now is I'm focusing on training my team to teach great classes, um, you know, do that part of the business, which is again, you know, arguably, you know, the most important, right? If you're not doing a good job with that, you're not gonna have anybody to, to manage. So, so I think that's really important that you have a, a quality um, staff that can do the things that you were doing, the systems that you put in place. Um, for instance, like with a regular class, we, we break our, our classes 45 minutes. So we have a agenda that we follow where it's the first 10 minutes is a warm up, And then we break out and do lesson one. We split the group up to different teachers so that they're all, you know, with their own, same age, same skill level. And then we, we meet up for a mat chat. And then we do lesson two, whatever that is, kicks, forms, punches, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then we finish with a game. So, you know, that's that's the, the tried and true um routine that's worked forever. And that's something that my staff needs to understand. You know, you don't skip the game because the game is really important for retention because your kids are going to walk out of there laughing and drooling on themselves because they just had so much fun. They're going to be back next time. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it is a process. It's, you know, sometimes you get instructors that are like, well, they don't deserve the game. They were misbehaving. That's a different problem where the instructor should have stepped in earlier and discipline the one or two that are taken away from the class, set an example, whatever. But in general, you got to have that finish. The, in the yeah, game. my son would walk away devastated if they ever skipped dodgeball. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, dodgeball is a crowd favorite. That's our school's favorite. Yep. Um, so so that's that's really it. Then there's also the teaching aspect, you know, praise, correct praise. Um you know, just, uh, you know, a lot of our instructors, which I'm guessing is very, you know, around the board, they're kids that came up through our program, then they join Black Belt Club, then they get their Black Belt, then they start their instructor training program and, you know, kind of mirror the head teacher, then they jump on payroll when they're 14 and they work like two hours a week. And then all of a sudden they're a sophomore in high school and they're working eight hours a week. And now they're leading classes as a junior, you know what I mean? So it's a process that we try to grow them, um, that way, you know what I mean? But it's a very, very important thing that you do that. Um, the next thing I'm doing is I have my head instructor at the, the big school and I'm starting to let go of a lot more um, of my responsibilities, which it's hard for me. And I've been through even the, the first thing I was telling you about getting instructors to take over your floor. That was extremely hard for me back when I had to do it. Now that's the easiest thing because I know I can't grow if I'm teaching all the classes, you know what I mean? So now I'm training my head instructor to do introductory lessons. We have a system in place where he can actually um, take the credit card payment and do the enrollment. So that's something brand new for us that um, we just have only done like two at this point, literally like two. Um, but that's, that's, again, I think an important thing because if I'm not there on Mondays and Wednesdays, there's no reason that I should have to follow up with the intro the next day when they're excited about the class, just sign them up and, and finish the, the deal, right? So that's where I'm at. And then I'm trying to get him and uh, one of my other main guys more involved with the marketing and helping me out with that social media stuff. Um, so, you know, again, I guess the, the, the moral of my point with scaling is you need to train people to do everything that you used to do or are currently doing. And then just as well, it's not better. And, um, you know, that's, I think, a really important part of growing to the next level. Um, all you right. Know, real quick, Steve, um, yeah. you mentioned that you want to grow your school, right, to 200 in the main location and 100 in the in the newer location. Mm -hmm. um, and then you mentioned that you, uh, you know, that's your goal that you set, right? And I, we all know there are sub goals, right, to reach right. that goal. 
overall, what is your rule of thumb or your goals, if you don't mind sharing with us, is your, um, you know, your uh, book intro rate, like a lead to book intro to convert for the intro to sale ratios? What percentages are your targets on those? Um, I think that the, the biggest percentage right now would be uh, new members and um, intros and, and getting them coming in. Like, so we do like a very um, easy entry. And I know I'm, I'm different than a lot of schools are, but I encourage people to join once a week when they start, especially for the kids. So I know I'm going a little bit off what you just asked, but um, you know, the uh, getting the new students in and signing up once a week um, I know how many spots I have available in those beginner classes and it's easier to sell to the parent because they don't know us yet. They don't have that trust. I mean, they like us. It's professional. Like we have a pretty, a very good closing ratio when people come in and, and try it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I like getting them in there and say, you know, you try it out, you know, at some point, like we do upgrades. So we do black belt club upgrades. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what i um, more focused on with the later classes is, is putting more people into sparring and black belt club or whatever. So right now, my main focus is getting the new students in. Um, like I said, I just did the whole software thing. I now for the first time have an exact number of what bots I have available in the different classes. So that's easier for me to say who I want to target. You know, do I want to target the little kids? Do I want to target more? Of I the see. And that would impact your ratios. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so that's that, that part of it. And then the second part of it is I'm not really focused on, cause it's already kind of like a well-oiled machine at this point is black belt club. So we do our belt testing every two months and we start putting our kids or any student in black belt club when they hit blue belt. So every test I may have, I don't know, anywhere between six and 15 new students going to blue belt. So now what I'm doing with those students is I start the upgrade process and we do a meeting and then I, I upgrade them to a three time a week program uh, in our black belt club. And then again, now again, for the first time, I have an exact number of spots available and I know where we can add, like we have room to add a couple of classes on Mondays. So that again, kind of goes back to what I was saying about get organized because you can't grow if you don't know your numbers and you don't know um, where you're able to kind of focus your growth, I guess. Right. So like, so that's that. So, so I guess um, to go back, I mean, the, the biggest push right now is for new members. Um, and then the black belt club upgrades are just going to happen. Um, but it's uh, a really good thing. I, I actually just, um, when I was doing all this, I think we have 60 of our students as black belt club members. And the cool thing wow. about is the, those are the highest paying students. They pay, um, anywhere from 249 a month to like 329 a month. Uh, so that's really cool. So if you're looking at like student value, um, I think our average, I meant to look this up before we started, but I think my average tuition is like just a, a little bit over $200 per student. Um, and the, the, the ones coming in at 150 a month, once a week, obviously they bring that number down, but the black belt club memberships, I mean, those are awesome. And they, the retention is huge. Like, so we talked a little bit about retention. Um, I'm a big, big believer in retention. I do not want to be that school that spends, you know, 10 grand a month on marketing to lose, you know, half of the students I signed up the next month. Like, that's not a good thing. I, I never was like that. Never want to be like that. So I'm more interested in, um, you know, upgrading my, my existing students and getting them their black belts with us. And, you know, that also creates uh, kind of like a, um, you know, uh, system for teachers you know it's a it's an ongoing thing like I was mentioning you get your lead teachers who are juniors in high school or sophomores in high school then they're off to college well now I already have all these other ones kind of coming up the track uh right. to take over and and be those next ones you know so so that's that's really where my focus is on all that stuff um did that answer your question? I know I kind of went off on a little bit of a... It, it really did because yours is more so, it's not a traditional, hey, we're looking for a cut over cut, you know, in terms of that. You're, you guys are more so, um, because you're ultra organized, looking to fill the empty spaces. So that's where you focus on is yep. filling those spaces. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, something also to consider, like I'm in Boston and our mm -hmm. rates are higher, which is relative to the area that we're in. Rent's higher. Everything's higher. Cost of living is higher. 
Um, but that would be another tip I would encourage you to, to get organized with is take a look at what you're charging and make sure that it's the right amount. Because I've talked to a few school owners, friends of mine, they have like 200 students and they're broke personally. Their, their overhead is out of whack. Their price, their pricing is out of whack. And that's what I told them because I actually went through similar problems. Uh, I don't know, probably 13 years ago, maybe we had a really big, nice facility, uh, but it, the rent, you know, would, would be almost 10 grand a month and the utilities and with karate schools, I mean, you have to have a really good program to, to not have that pinch you 10 grand a month, a lot of money, you know? So, so anyway, that, that forced me to kind of look at that part of it and make sure that we were charging the right amounts. And, uh, to be honest, we ended up doubling our rates pretty much for everybody. That's where I started my black belt club. I started doing upgrade programs with existing members and, and got all that stuff ironed out. So where we're at now, that's a really big part of my, excuse me, my school that's already been uh, tried and tested, figured out. I know what my rates have to be. I'm definitely more expensive than even a lot of the um, competitors that I have, but I don't really care because they don't really have an impact on my business. It's my business that I have to focus on. And, you know, what we offer is worth the price that we charge. And that's the value that you all need to understand what your value is. And you have to, you know, price yourself accordingly because, you know, you are dedicating your, your time and all the years that you've spent training and spending on your training. Um, so just don't shortchange yourself because then great example is my buddy who has 200 students, great person, great martial artist, got a great following, but the poor guy's broke every day because he can't, he does not charge it enough, you know? So, um, and that's another topic for another day on how to combat that problem. But, uh, it's definitely something that is worth thinking about or analyzing in your own business. Um, then going back to the fourth thing, excuse me, that I wanted to talk about as a marketing plan. Um, so, and, uh, Kristen, we have time, right? I know we started a little bit late. Do we still have still have time? Yep. Okay. All right. So, um, have a marketing plan. So that's the other thing. Like, uh, my wife is gets annoyed with me and makes fun of me at the same time that I have to have a plan for everything. I have to have a plan for where we're going to dinner on the weekend. I have to have a plan what we're doing for dinner at night. I have to have a plan for, for everything. And um, with your business, I do think it's very important to always have that plan. Uh, as much as I might be a little OCD with it, it's, um, it's important that you have something that you can follow and you don't have to follow it a hundred percent, but you, if you don't have anything written down and you don't have any like direction, uh, I know firsthand your life gets thrown all over the place, right? So if you can't just zero in on that marketing plan that you have and follow it, uh, you're going to get similar results to doing nothing. You know what I mean? And, and, and going back to me having the big school, I will admit I've gotten a little bit lazy over the years because I haven't had to do all that effort and work that I did um, years ago to really get this thing off the ground. And I've become accustomed to people just calling us and referred by friends or there's a mom Facebook group in the town that I'm in and they come in a lot from that. So I've been very fortunate to not really have to do that. However, now I got the second school and I'm really frustrated that I only have 50 students. I feel like I should have had more than hundred at this point and now I'm going to take action to do that. And then I'm going to continue to grow the, the original school because the, the other thing too that, that this has brought upon us is that now I have head instructors and staff that I need to pay accordingly. And my head guy is just get just got married, getting ready to start a family. You know, he can't work for low or pay he, if I want to keep him, right? And even if he wanted to... Um, even if he didn't want to leave, he may get forced into it at some point. So that's the other um, motivator behind me growing my main school is that we need more money to be able to pay him more. And I think that's that's a really important thing. So, um, and that's why I said I'm involving my instructors because you know over the years uh, this one individual would would you know, come to me every year asking for a raise and rightfully so like, you know, that's kind of the, the process when you're working, you, you, you should get a raise or whatever. And I've given them the raises over the year. And then finally I said, look, and I got another instructor who's ready to be the head guy at my new school from Newton. So he's coming an hour and a half my direction to take this on, but I've had to sweeten the deal with him to give him bonus money for driving out there, pay for his gas, a uh, little extra incentive for him to do that. He's also just out of college starting his life 
and he doesn't need as much as my main guy starting his his uh, family together, but he needs money to live. He shouldn't be strapped and, and worried about, you know, his meals and stuff like that. So, so I brought these two guys together and I said, look at, we're going to do this together and we're going to chart this out. And so everybody knows what numbers we have to hit to get X amount extra in your, in your paycheck. And so I'm, I'm relieved because I was very stressed when these guys are asking for, for more money. And I'm on the other end, you know, with all the bills and trying to figure stuff out and make sure that everything's running the right way. And the, the solution to how to make this all happen is really simple. It's more students, you know, it's more revenue. Um, and, and that, you know, is really the thing that solves uh, the majority of problems as school owners we're going to run into is um, having that cash flow come in the way it should and having uh, enough students to justify your rent and your payroll and, and everything. So, uh, so anyway, so our January marketing plan is uh, getting started. We have not finalized it, but we're working on it. And um, I wanted to just touch on, you know, Facebook and social media are really, really important. And that's really where everybody's pushing. Um, but not to keep that in your plan, obviously, but also don't forget about the grassroots marketing. And I... Um, have been doing this forever. Actually, funny story. If you look behind me, you can see a Drew Brother martial art uh, frame. And that's actually a tire cover from when I first started my school. I had a Jeep Wrangler. And that was my very first ad that I could only afford. It was, I think, 75 bucks. And I would drive around town with my Drew Brothers ad. And uh, that's about as grassroots as you can get. Uh, but it works, right? You get your name out there and everything, everybody starts to know you, you get your website, get a little bit of awareness out there. Um, that's one little example. Other examples, there's so many in-house marketing things that you could do that do take effort. Um, you don't have, as a school owner, you don't even have to do them. You can hire your staff to do them. This is like parent night out events, buddy days, um, birthday parties, all these things are really good. And that's going to be a big part of our marketing plan for January for 2022, because it takes effort. And I will tell you, we haven't done them in a while. And it, the students we've gotten have been from those other avenues, which is so, you know, we're fortunate to have, but no one has come in off of our effort, like our extended effort, right? So that's what I would like to do. And from my, from my experience, anytime you do anything, when you put in the effort, you will get some results. It may not be 30 new students, but you might get three new students. Off those three new students, you give them a VIP pass for their friends and you may increase them to nine new students and so on, right? So, so that's really what I'm trying to do. And, and the, the, I do like Facebook. I do like that stuff. We are going to definitely have that as part of it, but I like the other stuff better. And the reason I like it better is because a student who comes in from a happy friend who loves your program is a better student, right? I because the other one, even if they're going to be a great family or whatever, they still they still have to they still have to come up with that judgment on their own that that they love you and they love your program and they love everything about it. Um, the the ones who are coming in already from friends, I mean, it's really easy. And honestly, on that note, one of the big things that we're going to be doing with Facebook is is tagging the new students coming in and that sort of thing to encourage that word of mouth. Um, but the Facebook marketing and the um, advertising and stuff. You know, we're doing a little bit of that, but it's also, um, it gets kind of expensive. You know, if you really want to have a huge um, success on, on the Facebook marketing, I mean, you have to have like an $800 a month budget, which, you know, some school owners just don't have. And that's that's a lot of dough. And, um, so again, just keep that in mind. I mean, um, there's there's lots of different things that, that uh, you can do. Um, you do your fairs, you get involved in the community, reach out to the schools. I mean, there are so many different things that are available to you for the effort, which, um, you know, I, I prefer that over the $800 a month price, you know, even though, you know, the schools are doing well. It's just, um, you know, for those reasons, I like the, I like the grassroots stuff. So anyhow, we're going to be putting together our plan uh, for 2022. And then uh, I was telling Kristen and Kristen earlier, 
what they've done with this webinar is they forced me to put my goal down on paper, which has been something I've been talking about, but I haven't actually committed to it until, you know, today. Then I put down that I want to grow to 200 on the main school and 100 on the new school. And, you know, that is the goal. And we'll see what happens once that goal is reached, where the next level is, whether it's another school or whether it's expanding the second location or whatever. I don't really care and don't have to think about that right now. I want to just stay focused on the main goal to get the numbers up to where I need them to be. Um, so that uh, is pretty much that total stuff here. Uh, what I did just want to say is to kind of keep it simple and go back to what I said in the beginning is know your numbers, okay? And the first number you want to know is how many students that you have. Then you got to have the number of students that you want. Uh, two, you want to have the number of students in each class and what your capacity is, because once you know your available spots, uh, that'll help with your marketing and help your focus on, you know, the group age group, for example, you know, if you have more space in the, you know, kindergarten, first grade level, that's where you focus your attention. And then, if, or if you have more space in the, you know, older, older kids or middle school, you know, then you can kind of shift your, your, your focus on, on who you're going to go after. Right. Um, and then, yeah, know your number of available spots. And then one quick tip on that note, if you're scheduling trials, and, you know, you have, let's say, a six-year-old boy, um, try to get him to come into the class that you're going to enroll him in, right? So we still do one-on-ones. We'll do sometimes group stuff, but I, I still like the one-on-one -on -one introductory lesson. And uh, so, for example, if I have um, Tuesday at 345, I know I have five spots left in that class. I got a six-year-old boy who potentially has other six-year-old friends that could come join him after. I'm going to try to put him in that Tuesday class. So now what I've done is I've already said, okay, they can fit it in their schedule. So I'm not going to have them say, oh, well, this time just doesn't work because they're there right now doing their trial class, right? If it didn't work, they wouldn't be there. So that's a little tip that I try to do. And then, um, yeah, and then you, you know, have a, a solid enrollment procedure which, you know, again, that's another topic for another day, but um, you want to make sure all these little things, all these things are, are kind of tightened up so that your, your systems, which, you know, I've kind of roundabout talked about seven or eight or nine different systems that we use just with how we do things. Um, you want to have all that stuff kind of ironed out and ready to go. So if you don't have that stuff ironed out and ready to go, I would also encourage you to get organized with that because, um, you know, just like you want to know how many students you have, you should make sure that they're paying the appropriate rate that works, you know, as you grow. So we've got to kind of figure out some math about what you want to make out of the out of the business and, and what you should make out of the business, that sort of thing. And then you just kind of, you know, hit the ground running. But um, yeah, so anyway, I mean, that's that's where I'm at. That's what I'm doing. Hopefully one year from now, I can be on this webinar and tell you that uh, my new goal is to do whatever because I hit my 300 student mark goal. And, um, you know, we'll just kind of go from there. I don't know how 300 students even feels. I may be good with 300 students or, you know, it may, may want more. We'll see. But that's kind of the, uh, the, my plan anyway. Awesome. I like it. And um, to your point, Steve, Steve I've been working with, um, you know, martial arts business owners for two decades already. And I would tend to agree that the thing that they get wrong the most is their pricing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they undersell themselves, yeah. Yep, and I would love to explore that in another webinar where, you know, often I, I coach clients on, especially because, I mean, you look at what we've experienced in the past 18 months or so, right? Oh, nearly two years at this point and costs have just increased astronomically, right? So definitely it's the time to reevaluate. Okay, when's the last time I, I, I changed my member fees? Do I have sales ladder opportunity? You know, upgrades like you have, leadership mm -hmm. programs, black belt, you know, all of that stuff. Do I have those opportunities? Um, I would love to actually explore that more in another webinar because I, I think that that's where, um, you know, uh, people have a good opportunity to organically increase their revenue while also setting themselves up nicely for the future, for future growth as well. Yep. No, I agree with you. It's, it's one of the biggest things that I did. And, um, you know, I, I love Black Belt Club. And like I said, I just got it kind of on a, it's on a cycle. You know, I've got uh, parents asking me now, can I join Black Belt Club? I'm like, not yet. 
you know, I'm not ready. Like I need to get organized. Right. I need to know my numbers and we do it after every test because for me, you know, we, we have a whole process where we have a meeting with them and then um, we have uh, what do you call it? We do our meeting. And then of course, some of them will sign up right away. Some of them will wait. And then I have to follow up. So it's a, it's a process that takes over a month to actually get my black belt, my new black belt club members into the school or into the program. Um, so anyway, again, it's like a system, but it's cool because, uh, like I said, like those, those students pay at least double or close to double what, you know, somebody coming in is paying. And then our prices are, I think, priced appropriate. Um, the new school, I've had a little bit of pushback on the, on the prices. Again, we've, we have the students, so I'm not changing it, but they, uh, were a little bit sticker shocked when they came in and they're like, well, you know, the school down the street lets you come unlimited for the same amount. And I'm like, well, you know, we're not the school down the street, you know, and I stand to my guns and saying, this is what we do. And this is how I run my program. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a higher price, but I'll be, I'll be a hundred percent honest with you. I would rather have the amount of students that I have now paying the money that they're paying me now than having double the students paying less because it would be a total chaotic scene with that many students and you're, you're making the, the same revenue that we're making right now with less students. So um, I always try to focus on quality. And, you know, when you're, when you're selling a student, I mean, I don't like to talk and sell and sell really, but our reputation kind of sells it for us. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, we know people coming in, especially at the main school, you know, they come in knowing that it's going to be expensive, which is good because they're still coming in. Right. And we want that. And, and I don't, I'm not saying that like a jerk that we're, you know, trying to rip people off for overprice. No, I'm you're not trying to be the cheapest guy on the block because guess no, what? There's all. always somebody that comes along and does it cheaper somehow, some way, you know? Right. So you right. can't and, sell and, yourself and, on that ever. Yeah. No. And you, you get what you pay for. So, you know, my, again, to, to everyone, you know, on the call is that, um, you know, understand what your value is and then, then stick to it. And you'll be surprised. The first couple of times might be a little bit tough. I remember the first time I did a, a membership price increase, I was filling out the form and my, my hand was shaking because I went from 65 a month to 95 a month. Right. And, and that was way in the beginning. And, you know, now, you know, I'm signing people up with, you know, a $500 deposit, uh, 279 a month, three-year commitment. And, it's, but that's the program. You know what I mean? And it's, it's something that you just have to have that confidence in yourself and your program. And then, you know, if there's holes in your program, you're going to know it. Like one real quick example is if you're like, I was saying how I don't want to spend 10 grand a month and then lose, you know, half the people I signed up. That's a huge hole and a huge red flag. There's a problem on your floor that you're not retaining students for a month or two. Like that's a huge, huge problem that needs to be fixed before you sell anybody a membership, I think, you know, and then, um, you know, and then the retention number, that's a, that's a really big um, thing to, to help you gauge your success, you know, and like, it's funny, you know, going back to my wife, uh, she, you know, criticize a little bit some of the stuff that we do or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? Our retention is, you know, 2%, you know, like we're, we're, it's not really a concern. Like I gr granted, we can always improve and always be better in the stuff that we're doing, but that number alone tells you something really important. You know, if you're only losing, you know, a small handful of students each month, I, with the number of students that we have, I think that's really good, you know, and that's that right there tells the, the story on that part of it, you know what I mean? So, right. And to your point of being ultra organized, let's say that 2% changes all of a sudden because you're so organized and you're using software to, you know, put people in classes and stuff like that, you're able to pinpoint who is might be responsible for things going wrong right. you can pinpoint right. things faster that way you can say okay johnny leaves johnny only goes to this instructor in these classes mm -hmm. so something's right. happening with that instructor in those classes so i personally love being ultra organized so i i get it mm -hmm. <laughs> and it just helps you solve problems faster and be able to do that pivot and project better so yeah. it's a lot of work up front like you're saying but it's less work on the back end if right. things go sideways. Right. Yeah. And that's where I'm at now too, is like, you know, nothing, nothing much is going to change on my day to day when I have 300 students versus 200 students. And I think that's really cool. Like the things that take a little extra time are okay. I got to process 
another, you know, 100 students belt test sheets, or I have to do another 100 certificates, right? Those are things that are, they take up time, but it's, you know, it's, it's pretty easy uh, to just keep things, you know, you know, if I add 10 students to an already existing class, and the only thing I have to do is throw another instructor on there, everything else stays the same. I mean, that's, that's, that's what I'm striving for, too, is just to kind of have it, which I think, like I said, we're pretty much there. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, that it's, it is. And, and, you know, as a school owner, I can tell you, being organized is not the easiest thing for me. And I think most school owners, we, we tend to have very similar uh, personalities, you know, I mean, that's probably why we've been doing martial arts for our whole lives, um, which is fine. And that's all great. But if, you know, it, I, I do really think it's important that you get on top of that organization. And if you can't do it, and you have a spouse or a, uh, an instructor, somebody that is and can, then, you know, you really need to do that because you can't just show up to class, teach, you know, not track attendance and then, you know, go on that way, uh, especially if you're trying to scale to the next level. I think it's very, very important. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Awesome. Good stuff. Yes, very good stuff. And I'm looking here, it does not look like we have any questions, which just means you did a fine job explaining everything, Steve, and uh, you, we appreciate all of the insight and tips, great content as usual. So thank you very much, Steve, and thank, yeah, anytime. thank for, you for joining us today. We truly appreciate it. Okay, well, I appreciate it too. And uh, yeah, if anybody has any questions, feel free to you know, share my info. And they can reach out to me directly or through you guys or whatever. But um, yeah, I'm always happy to help. And uh, yeah, you guys have a very happy holiday. And uh, and then hopefully we all hit our goals. 2022. Yes. Awesome. Here's to reaching those goals. Thank you, Steve. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.